Hey everyone, uh, Chris Wilson here with Upstream Vitality, a grassroots healing production. And uh, I've got a really awesome video for y'all today. It's about an hour long, maybe an hour and a half. Uh, but it deals with parasites and um, the seriousness of parasites. And a lot of people, I think, overlook them and even would challenge to say that most people in America wouldn't have to deal with parasites. But I disagree with that theory altogether. Most people think that you only have to deal with parasites if you're in a uh, underdeveloped third world country, but the case goes, you can get parasites in a first world developed country. So check out this video. Um, I did not conduct the interview. It is between Dr. Jay Davidson and uh, Trevor, and you will see and learn a little bit about the two, but just pay attention. Let me know what you think. And um, I just wanted to put this out there for you guys to get some extra information on Maybe parasites could be harming your health. I have gone through uh, not his entire protocol, but I have done um, on a number of occasions the mimosa pudica seed that you're going to see in this video. And uh, bear with me, I'm on job site right now, so if it's a little loud or disruptive, I, uh, do, I do ask for your forgiveness. But go ahead and in the meantime, I'll shut up so you can get to watching this video. If you like it or if you find it beneficial, please hit that subscribe button, share, and like it. Thanks again. Excellent. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you can see me and hear me. That's the whole idea anyway. So it is midnight here in Ireland. And I know in the US it's about seven o'clock in the evening, I think, um, Eastern, about four o'clock Pacific. Um, down in Australia, I'm afraid I have no idea what time it is. So welcome to you, wherever you're from. I just noticed Shirley is from Sunshine Coast, Australia. So welcome, Shirley. And um, someone from Middle Earth, New Zealand already, David. So. Welcome to you all. You're very welcome to tonight's presentation. Lovely to have you with us. Um, I just put in there, let us know where you're from. If you haven't already done so, please put that in the chat box. That would be good for us to just see where everyone is coming from. We've got Texas, we've got Ontario, Colorado, Nova Scotia, all over the place. It's 9 a.m. tomorrow morning in Australia, apparently. So thank you for that. And if you wouldn't mind, um, because webinars are notoriously um, fickle, so just let me know, you should be able to see a blue box with the words just checking in the middle. If you can see those uh, words in the middle of that blue box and you can hear me, just put yes and yes in the comment section. That would be wonderfully helpful. Uh, normally it takes about 10 seconds for what I say to go to you and then the chat to come back on the screen. So at any second now, we should hopefully get a lot of yes and yeses. And there we go, yes and yes all over the place. So. That's good, good news. Now, let me tell you, there will be technical issues, folks. There always are on webinars. It's just the nature of the beast. So and again, Elaine is saying she can hear me, but no blue box. So Elaine, what I would say to you is 99% of all problems, I'm afraid, are at the user end. We do these things all the time, and we know from experience that the problems happen uh, not in the output from us, but in the reception at your end. So it happened to us last night. In trying to receive a webinar, we couldn't receive it ourselves. So there's some ideas for you. You can change your browser. If you're using Firefox, try Chrome. Chrome's probably the best usually. Click reconnect. There's a reconnect button at the top middle. Close your virus software or your ad blockers. Try all those things. There's a yellow box up at the top of the chat that explains different things you can try. So please feel free to look at that and see if that can help you with any issues you might have. In the chat area, I would ask you as we go, please be civil to each other and stick to what we're actually talking about. We had a webinar last week about hydrogen water. Someone decided to talk about root canals and everyone then pits in about root canals and suddenly we can't see the comments on hydrogen water. So please stick to uh, the subject in question, which tonight is parasites. And also, if you've got questions, please save them until the Q&A at the end, because if you put them in now, they will be so far down the chat box that we won't be able to see them by the time we get to the end. So please save your questions until we ask you for the Q&A later on. I have to tell you before we start that nothing here has been evaluated by the FDA and nothing I'm going to tell you about in this webinar is intended to diagnose, treat, cure or prevent disease. This is purely an educational event, so it's important that you realize that and the FDA insists that I tell you. So there we go. Let me tell you who I am. For those of you who don't know, I think most of you probably do because you're, you're a little longer audience. Uh, my name is Trevor King. I was executive producer of that vitamin movie about four or five years ago. I then did Faith, Hope, and Cancer, uh, Live Longer, Feel Better, the eight-part series that was released about six weeks ago. And I have been the host of various online summits as well. 
But the most important thing I want to stress to you is that I am just a normal guy. In other words, I'm not an expert. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a journalist. I am a normal guy who came into this whole health thing because I had issues and my issue was depression. And I came into this health arena to try to find natural solutions to that depression. Um, and thankfully, I've been reasonably successful in that. So that is why I'm here. That's why I've been hanging around these five years, trying to find out more and more stuff about um, just how to live a healthier life. That's me with my good friend, Dr. Z, Eric Zielinski, uh last year in, I think we were in Texas at the time, not quite sure. But anyway, what do you expect tonight? Well, my goal is very simple tonight, that you will understand by the end of it that there is a very real issue and it's parasites. Now, I came to this through one particular way. I have a good friend who makes documentaries and he has interviewed hundreds of people as I have. And I, I said to him one day, what in your opinion is the most important thing you've ever done in your life that's moved you the most in the health area? So what have you done that has brought you from not very well to being extremely healthy? One thing that's moved you the furthest? His answer was, he said, undoubtedly parasite cleanse. So I know still nothing about this. I know probably 3% of what there is to know about parasite cleanses. So tonight you're gonna to find out all about them. Now, I've got together with a guy who is basically recognized as being the king of the knowledge about parasites in this arena. So he is the health experts that everyone goes to when they wanna find out about parasites. And I have done an amazing deal with him that he also has a supplement company and he is connected with the supplement company. And we have a 20% offer for you at the end of this if you stay to the end, if you're interested, okay? Whether you buy anything or not tonight is not the main point, folks. The main point is I want you to find out about this. I want you to learn about it. And what you do with that knowledge at the end is totally 100% up to you. So stay with us. We have question and answer at the end. Um, but I want to introduce you to our special guest tonight, Dr. Jay Davidson. Now, Jay has, as far as I know, done summits on parasites. He is an expert in Lyme disease, which as he will probably tell you is, is through personal necessity as well. Um, but I am just going to hand over to Jay. I hope that he is somewhere in the background. I am in Ireland. Jay is in the United States. Uh, Jay, if you are there, if you would just uh, bring your... There he is. Fantastic. Yeah. Good to see you, sir. Good to be here. I am excited to go through some parasite stuff. Fantastic. Jay, where, where are you based? Where are you coming from? Uh, Puerto Rico. Oh, really? Fantastic. I didn't realize you were based there. Yeah, so Eastern time zone right now. It's about seven, just after seven o'clock at okay. night. Fantastic. So. We went down to Puerto Rico to film a couple of really good cancer guys down there. Um, Michael Gonzalez and um, someone else, but real top-notch experts in using vitamin C for cancer. Awesome. So, listen, Yeah, we, we love it here. Wonderful to have you with us. I am going to, uh, it's a little bit like mission control here, folks, so you have to bear with me. <laughs> I try to make this uh, work. So let me close that. Stop the slide presentation. And I am going to minimize myself. Nope, that's minimizing Jay. There we go. And Jay, cool. it's, it's over to you. Uh, most of my audience and the most of the audience here tonight will know. Uh, well, I, I might do them a disservice in saying this, but I think they will know they're beginners in the parasite realm. Let me put it that way. So um, it's over to you, sir. Awesome. Let's get uh, let's get started. I got some slides, um, tons of information I'd like to go through. Uh, just let me know, Trevor, if you can see that slide. Just I so can say indeed. Parasite. Okay, perfect. All right. So um, yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to see uh, chat as I'm as I'm rocking and rolling, but uh, we'll try to get to your questions here at the end. So um, just going to cover parasites, worms. Uh, I was brought into this simply because my wife almost died of Lyme disease. She actually almost died twice when she was seven years old. And then again, uh, when she gave birth to our daughter, uh, when she was 30 years old, my daughter is almost seven. So that was, uh, seven years ago, uh, quite, quite a bit of trauma, but that then led us to, uh, led me to understand a lot about Lyme disease, a lot about heavy metals. And then a few years after that, picked up the importance of parasites and off it was to the races on getting people well. I mean, that, that was by far a really big uh, breakaway thing. So my promise to you tonight is what took me eight years to figure out, 
uh, I want to condense that into tonight. Uh, so if you want to know this information, definitely put yes in the chat. I'd love to get some energy uh, rocking and rolling tonight because uh, I know Trevor, it's late by where you're at. So we got to bring some energy to Trevor here, uh, keep him awake tonight. So um, a little bit about myself, I uh, wrote a couple books, Five Steps to Restoring Health Protocol was my first one. Second one was How to Fix Lyme Disease. They're both uh, international best sellers. Uh, did multiple summits, um, a few on Lyme disease. So I actually interviewed over 100 different people on Lyme disease, uh, did a parasite summit, have a viral retroviral summit uh, coming up in a month. So I'm sure uh, Trevor can drop a link to that as well too. Um, really excited about that. There's already about 24, 25,000 people uh, registered. So that one's going to be a, a fantastic event. Also hosted uh, the Detox Project. I've uh, been featured on documentary series. Uh, it's my good friend Jonathan Otto and his wife Lori and their uh, new baby Asher, uh, who's probably four or five months, so maybe not brand new, but uh, really excited uh, to, to see little ones come into the world. Um, and I'm the guy there in purplish pink, I guess. It's probably more of like a pinkish shirt. Um, next to me, the guy with the sweater, that's Dr. Dietrich Klinghart. Uh, the flannel next to me, kind of checkered shirt, that's uh, my really good friend and co-founder of Microbe Formulas, Dr. Todd Watts, and then Dr. Christine Schaffner. And that's just us you know, really masterminding about the importance of parasites and, and where it fits in. Um, so I came into this, in, into this realm of meeting Dr. Todd Watts and um, coming together, and I'll, I'll maybe share that story as, as we rock and roll. If you ever hear Microbe Formulas, that is a company I co-founded with Dr. Todd Watts. But I really believe that you are here for a reason tonight, this afternoon, you know, in the morning, wherever you're coming from in the world, Australia to Hawaii to, you know, Europe and so on. Don says, Don here, I'm so blessed uh, for all your work, Dr. J. Timing was so in alignment with my journey. I feel I am truly on the path now to healing. It's been a long time coming. Uh, this is my family. Uh, that's my wife and daughter, um, which, I mean, going back, um, almost losing my wife, I there were some moments where, I thought my, my daughter was a curse. I'm like, my wife is literally dying, you know? Um, and now when I look back, obviously I've, I've, I have some guilt of that thought because I realized, no, she was actually a blessing that uh, if it wasn't for my wife nearly dying after uh, giving birth to my daughter, we would have never really dug deep and actually uncovered the source or sources. So after spending over a half million dollars, lots of doctors, you know, all the emotional trauma of her almost dying and, you know, all that I'm, I'm here to say to you that really we got to look at it as either everything is happening to you in life or everything is happening for you. And here's what I mean to you. God, why me? Why, why is this happening? Why, I, I can't believe that this keeps happening to me versus for me. Like, oh, this is actually part of my path and this is going to uh, help me help others in the future or et cetera. Right. And, and it's one thing to intellectually understand. OK, yeah, if Dr. J says for me, uh, you know, not to me. It's another thing, though, to move that in your heart and really understand, no, this is actually for me. I look back at all the quote unquote troubling, stressful times, and I realize that those are pivotal moments that shifted my path to get me to here today to be speaking to you about things that are going to change and transform your health. And if I hadn't had those tragedies, quote unquote, actually blessings, happen that this this wouldn't be there. So just think about that. But I want to cover really the three secrets to improving your health uh, with getting rid of parasites. So if you want to know that, let's buckle up and get to it. Now, there might be some gross pictures in here. So I apologize. But honestly, uh, parasites, in the words of Shrek, if you ever saw that uh, Pixar or Disney movie, uh, Shrek, he says, always better out than in. And that's really the whole theme of parasites. So this comes from times. Uh, this was a uh, doctor removed a 15 centimeter long parasitic worm from a man's eye. Now, a man in India went to a doctor complaining of pain and itching in the eye. Turns out he actually had a 15 centimeter long parasitic worm living in his eye. The worm is believed to be a type of roundworm that is spread via mosquito bites. So remember that, mosquito bites. This is an article from the Siberian Times. Uh, and this was July of last year, 2018. It says worms frozen in permafrost for up to 42,000 years 
come back to life. So worms discovered in Siberia after being defrosted, placed in Petri dishes, researchers observed it uh, as two of the unfrozen worms began to move and even eat again. At 32,000 and 41,700 years old, they earn the titles of the oldest living animals in the world. So parasites are very resistant. Uh, the blemishes moving around on her face, this is Washington Post, June of last year, uh, turned out to be a parasitic worm. So this woman noticed a small bump below her left eye. The bump didn't stay there. After a couple of days, it moved around, uh, above her eye. A few days after that bump disappeared, severe swelling began in her lip. The culprit, a parasitic roundworm transmitted via mosquito bite, traveling through her face. So it's a roundworm via mosquito bite. And you might be feeling like this. That's okay. Hang with me. There is lots of gems, uh, but I just want to kind of throw out some news, uh, latest news here in the parasitic world. So this actually came from the Washington Post, January of 2018. It says he ate raw fish almost every day until a five foot long tapeworm slithered out of his body. And this is what it is. That's a toilet, uh, you know, cardboard toilet paper roll. Uh, that they rolled the tapeworm up on five and a half feet long of a tapeworm. So pretty crazy. Now, what's interesting is when you look at cultures and eating such, something such as raw fish, there's natural anti-parasitics built into traditional food. So that natural anti-parasitic, wasabi. Uh, so if you have wasabi with, uh, you know, something that could potentially have parasites in it, you're a lot less, lot less likely to be affected because that wasabi is a natural anti-parasitic. So there's things like kimchi and things that will also help. This comes from Live or uh, Live Science. It's May 2nd of 2018. It says doctors pulled 14 squirming roundworms from a woman's bile ducts. A little gross. A uh, woman went to the hospital after six months of abdominal pain so bad that she could barely stand up, persistent fever, vomiting, and extreme weight loss. After originally being misdiagnosed and prescribed antibiotics, a CT scan at the hospital found 14 roundworms that had made their way out of her intestine and into her bile ducts. So they climbed from her intestinal tract up into the liver bile duct area. This type of roundworm called a scarus lumbricoides can make its way into our intestines when we ingest fruits or vegetables contaminated with its eggs. So we're looking at fruits and vegetables can have uh, parasites in it. We're looking at raw fish can have parasites in it. And the Ascaris lumbricoides, that roundworm, a female can produce up to 200,000 eggs per day. 200,000 eggs per day. Let that sit with you. I mean, that's just crazy when you think about it. So my life was really changed by parasite cleansing. I had a ton of health issues. I mean, nothing like my wife dealt with. So when we were together, I mean, it was clearly about her getting well, but I was along for the journey. Uh, you know, we'd go to doctor's offices and be running tests. And I'm like, hey, I want to run that too. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of tag teaming with, with her in this whole thing. But I had really bad skin issues, massive bags under my eyes, really dark purple marks that, I mean, growing up, people thought, at times I, I got punched in my eyes because they were so dark. Uh, and that's really more of a parasite uh, food allergy symptom. It's actually a food allergy symptom that is caused by parasites. Environmental allergies, food allergies, especially dairy. I used to not be able to put milk on my cereal. I mean, I don't drink cow's milk, but uh, back in the day I couldn't drink milk and I put apple juice on my cereal growing up because that's what they told me. I took Tums for my calcium. I mean, the stuff I was told was like, whoa, Ooh, if I could go back. But you know what? That's all been part of my journey to help um, allow me to grow and learn. Again, is it to you or for you? I was diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, prescribed psychiatric drugs, uh, absolutely despised that, hated that. that was, I, I vividly remember uh, that. I uh, actually wanted to take my life when I was younger as well too. And that just, to be just, I mean, transparent, that came to me a few, um, like two or three years ago. I'd pretty much black that out or like block that out of my brain. And just as I continue to open up and really trying to raise my level of consciousness and awareness and things that, that hit me one day and I just started having tears in my eyes realizing, wow, that was a pretty, that was a pretty, pretty rough, rough time. A really sensitive digestive tract, prone to getting sick, grinding my teeth uh, and just not feeling right. And you know, those symptoms, every single one of them is a parasite symptom. It's like, wow. 
I mean, I remember, and not not to be too graphic, but I I remember having pain in my, I mean, anus, butthole, basically, going to the pediatrician, them saying, lay on, lay on your stomach, pull your pants down, let me look, you know, and they're like basically spreading your butt cheeks, like, oh, you have, uh, you have some anal fissures, you know, here, take this steroid type cream, rub it on there. And I'm just thinking, I'm like, that's another parasite sign, you know, like, how many people have parasitic issues and have no clue? Now, clearly the news things I was going through, those are extreme. I mean, most people don't have these extreme, like have a 104 degree fever. I go to the hospital, do a CT scan. They find, you know, 5 billion worms, you know, climbing around me. Like that, these are, these are news things, right? These aren't the typical thing. The typical thing is we have parasitic infections that are slowly dwindling our health. And so I, I was uh, speaking at a seminar on stage and I had uh, you know, just a practitioner and had a doctor in the, in the audience ask me a question. I was actually speaking about Lyme disease and hormones. This is four, five years ago, so a while ago. And um, I'm like, wow, either this doctor is really smart or he's a jerk. <laughs> and and uh, so after I got done speaking, I he came up and seemed really friendly and we talked. And I was like, oh, no, this guy's really smart. He just really wants to know the answer. Well, it turned out to be that um, Dr. Todd Watts. So I'm, I'm the guy like in that bluish color. He's in the purple, purplish. And we, we went out to dinner with some mutual friends and at dinner, he's showing me pictures of stuff on his phone. And I was like, Whoa, what are those things? He's like, Oh, there's, you know, that's a rope worm. There's some round worm there. There's thread worm, you know, all these different types of worms that these patients are getting out of him. And he's like, yeah, I'm just seeing such huge results with clearing parasites out. And I'm so intrigued. I'm like, what, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, well, I have this um, herb that I brought in and encapsulated. It's called mimosa pudica seed. I'm like, mimosa pudica seed. It took me, I mean, it took me a good while to even get that name down. Mimosa pudica seed. I'm like, okay, well, I'd love to try some. So he sent me a bottle. And at the time, it came in like this pharmaceutical looking bottle with just the label that said mimosa pudica. I'm like, okay. Uh, I called him like, what is this? He's like, well, it's so sticky. Uh, it's an herb and it's the only ingredient besides the capsule and I have to have it because it's so sticky I have to have it hand encapsulated at a compound pharmacist. I'm like, okay, so it looks like a drug, but it's natural. He's like, yep, exactly. I'm like, okay, so I start so I start taking it and I, I mean my life just changed changed from then and as I became better friends with Dr. Watts, uh, we were at another conference and my brother was with me and he's like, hey, why don't you partner with with Todd and come up with some better parasite formulas. I'm like, that's a great idea, actually. And then Todd said, that's a great idea. And that's actually how we started the company. So um, even leading up to it, I actually told him, hey, I don't think it's a good idea to start a supplement company, just FDA and all the regulations. And luckily, he didn't listen. And next thing you know, you know, we're working together. So it's a, kind of a serendipitous type, type story. But I'm going to show some pictures coming up. So just a warning, if you don't want to look, turn away. I'll let you know when you can, when you can look back. Uh, but these were some of the pictures he was showing me on the phone. And I was like, what is those things? You know, I mean, just like chunks of wormy looking stuff coming out. And um, I'll, I'll switch it off the slide. So if you looked away, you can you can look back now. But it, it was just that moment of, wow, what is that? And and so he shipped me the Mimosa Pudica seed bottle. And I'm at a seminar. And this is the Mimosa Pudica seed there. Um, Trevor will, or Lindsay can, can drop a link for you guys. Um, and I'll talk more about that, but I started taking it 16, 17 days in, I'm going to a seminar. I'm not even speaking, just attending this one. And all of a sudden my stomach starts rolling. I'm like, Ooh, what did I eat? I feel like I gotta go to the bathroom and had some loose stools. The next day went to the bathroom and just that moment of like, Oh, my stomach just doesn't feel good. Go to the bathroom is like, Whoa this wave of, I just feel so much better. And I go to wipe, I'm like that didn't feel right. I look down and there's these two long worms hanging from me into the toilet bowl. And they were dead, uh, but they were Ascaris slumbercoides roundworms. And I'm sitting on the toilet and my mind just starts racing. I'm like, Heather, it's my wife. I'm like, get over here, you have to see this. So I'm, at, I'm in a hotel room in the bathroom. My wife and daughter happen to be there. Uh, as well. And then actually my brother-in-law was there too. So my daughter comes running over at the time. She's about three years old and she's like, dad, 
why do you have string hanging from your butt? I'm like, Heather, get over here. She comes over, looks, and is like, whoa, I'm just grossed out, but yet I can't look away. What is that? I'm like, these are worms. So I took some toilet paper. I grabbed onto the worms, just slowly pulled them out, flushed, you know, washed up, and I'm like, hun, I'm like, if I have these, a relatively healthy guy, I mean, who else has these? And I was working with, at the time, about 50 clients in the chronic Lyme disease space uh, and clients. And I'm like, you have to get on this. You got to try this. I think this is going to be big. And it was. It was one of the most transformational, transformative uh, things that I ever added uh, really to uh, a protocol. And then that just started me down this path of better understanding parasites. And so for the next month and a half, I had piles of like these little four to seven inch, maybe they're not little, but like four to seven inch worms. Like it just, it didn't even look like I had poop. It was just worms coming out. And then it stopped. And I was like, oh, whew. you know, a month and a half later, like, thank goodness I'm done with that. Not a big deal. And then all of a sudden I started getting itchy butt and my stomach started getting a little sensitive. I'm like, huh, what is going on? You know, this doesn't, this doesn't feel right. So I went back on and just, uh, I, I have no idea why somebody would name a restaurant or a, a food place itchy butt, but I thought that was quite hilarious and I would totally never go there. But um, so I went back on Mimosa Pudica seed and all of a sudden, boom, piles of worms coming back out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I still have more. And then all of a sudden, after a month, month and a half, it stopped again. I was like, oh, it must be done. Then symptoms started coming back again. I'm like, wait a minute, what is going on? Like I thought I cleared them out, went back on Mimosa Pudica seed and boom, they started coming out again. And I realized, oh my gosh, I bet you it's the eggs I hadn't hatched and they just keep hatching and I'm not on stuff to kill them. So then they grow and then they start getting issues. So I learned a lot through my own journey and also through clients' journeys. And secret number one, if you wanna know secret number one, you can write this down. You can screenshot this stuff um, as well too. Take notes, feel free. I should've mentioned that earlier as well. I just want to dive in. <laughs> There's so much info to cover here. But secret number one is you have to be persistent and consistent with herbs. And the reason why is parasites will lay eggs. Like I said, the Ascaris lumbricoides roundworm can lay 200,000 eggs, the female, within a day. So let's say you kill the quote unquote worms that are there, but the eggs are still there. Then the eggs hatch and you're not on any products anymore because you're like, I don't see anything else. Well, boom, you're going to have, continue to have uh, issues. So it's you're going to keep taking it down, but you want to be persistent and consistent. So there's no two day, five day, seven day worm cleanse and they're all gone. This is a process and that's a big, a big piece to this. And I do believe a myth is that you, you, you know, a lot of people out there say, well, you need some antiparasitic drugs. I, I don't, think you do. I mean, the natural herbs that are out there are amazing. Now, could you start on some antiparasitic meds or, you know, incorporate them in on the journey at some point? P possibly, but I'm a really big fan of natural products. And there's amazing things out there for parasite cleansing. Now, there are three different classes of parasites. Uh, there is the protozoa type, which is a single cell microscopic organism. So these are the tiny ones. They're the helmus which are larger, they're multi-celled organisms that are often visible uh, to the naked eye. And then there's the ectoparasites. These are, uh, they transmit parasites through biting and stinging, such as the mosquitoes you were seeing in the news clips, uh, fleas, ticks, uh, lice, mites, these type of things. So we're really gonna hone in primarily talking about the protozoa and helmeth side of things. But when you look at, there's a there's a textbook here, it's called the In in the Light of Evolution, Volume 2, Biodiversity and Extinction. I don't expect you to get it, but in, in this book, they talk about the, that we estimate there are between 75,000 to 300,000 helma species parasitizing the vertebras. So anywhere between 75,000 to over a quarter of a million different types of helmuth species. So that's just one, that's, that's not prozoa, that's helmuth. And the key takeaway here, Remember this number. There are hundreds of paras parasite species that affect humans. Hundreds. And this is, we're going to just remember that and come, come around to it. So this came out of Reuters. Uh, this was November of 2018. This is a giant 
uh, worm that they had floating for some research that they came out with. But the research team, uh, the, the title is, or the title article says, Gene Study Reveals Secrets of Parasitic Worms, Possible Treatments. But in this article, it says the research team compared the genomes of 81 species of roundworms and flatworms, including 45 that had never previously had their genome sequenced. So they looked at 45 different species of roundworms and flatworms they never sequenced before. And the analysis found almost a million new genes that had not been seen before, belonging to thousands of new gene species. This is 2018. Over a million new genes just from sequencing 45 roundworm and flatworm species they hadn't sequenced before. Okay, so just remember that and come back to that on the testing side. This is the CDC, the Centers for Disease Creation. I mean, it's the Centers for Disease Control. A little funny joke there. Uh, so this is Thursday, May 8th of 2014. It says parasitic infections also occur in the United States. Millions of people infected. And you can replace the United States with first world country. Okay, because I know there's worldwide people here. Most people think parasitic diseases, and I quote from the CDC, occur in poor and developing countries or are infections they might pick up on a trip to a foreign country. However, parasitic infections also occur in the United States. In some cases affect millions of people. Often they go unnoticed with few symptoms, but many times the infections cause serious illnesses, including seizures, blindness, pregnancy complications, heart failure, and even death. Anyone, regardless of race or economic status, can be infected. So how do we get parasites? We get parasites through our food supply, just like that the article said before, fruits and vegetables, meat, especially raw and undercooked. We get parasites through our water supply, um, cryptosporidium, giardia, I mean, all these types of bacteria and parasites and different things can be in our water supply. That's why it's so important to make sure you purify, filter your water. Uh, soil, so just walking barefoot on the soil, right? This big earthing grounding thing that's pop being popularized or been popularized. Well, just walking through your garden with bare feet, you can get hookworms right to your soul and right inside your body they go through the air. So sneezing, you're not just covering your mouth when you sneeze for bacteria and viruses, but you can actually literally sneeze out pinworm eggs to people. I mean, it's just disgusting when you think about that. And the pinworms are the ones that cause your butt to be itchy. That's what I had. And unfortunately, when I was cleansing, my wife's like, why is my butt itchy? I'm like, oh, sorry. She's like, oh my gosh. So believe me, if you have family in the household, if you have pets, it is good thing to cleanse them as well. I always recommend who's ever, um, you know, the most symptomatic with health issues, uh, Start first, then a couple months in, you can introduce everybody else. But uh, if you're all just kind of more wellness, then have everybody cleanse together because you just don't want to be sharing it back and forth. Uh, you can also get it through your pets, cats, dogs. Um, I I have a dog. I'm a animal lover. Love, like totally love animals. The thing I'll say is I don't let my dog lick me because see where animals lick cats, dogs. Uh, and our dog does not sleep in our bed. So those are just, I know there's some people that probably don't want to hear that, but that is a higher likelihood to get parasites. Uh, and improper food handling, salad bars. A lot of them test positive for parasites and it could be just the, the improper food handling and everybody touching stuff. And next thing you know, there's parasites in your salad dish or salad bar that you're getting at Whole Foods and you thought it was, you were good. Uh, this comes from Fox News in 20, uh, 2011, actually. It says, fecal matter found on 72% of grocery carts. Ooh. University of Arizona swabbed handles of 85 different shopping carts in four different states looking for bacterial contamination. They found 72% of the carts had a positive marker for fecal matter and 50% had E. coli. Woo. I've never, I've never been a fan of those hand sanitizers, but when you read that, you're like, hmm, <laughs> what do we do here, right? So uh, if you want to know what the best laboratory testing for parasites is and hold up before you go spending money on kits, it isn't a slam dunk, but these are the best parasite lab testings, lab tests out there. Parawellnessresearch.com, you're looking at about $300 for a test. It's about a $10 or $15 membership fee. Uh, and they're looking at uh, stool and urine. GI map by Diagnostic Solutions is also a good, good match, um, depending on where you can get it from, what practitioner, you're looking at four to $500. And these are US prices, so some might be limited where they can't ship outside the states, et cetera. Uh, and it's, I mean, the thing, the thing I look at is, let's say that you run a test and it comes up negative. 
Well, does that mean that you don't have parasites? And I'm going to say no way, because here's the problems with lab testing. Conventional labs, they're slammed with samples. So when they're looking at a stool sample trying to identify parasites, they're trying to jam through 20 samples within an hour. So they're maybe, what, spending three minutes on your on your stool sample, and if they don't see anything, well, then it's negative. I would say technicians aren't necessarily looking for parasites in first world countries. Therefore, they're not really going to find them because they're not necessarily looking for them. So I think training can be an issue as well, too. And these are just my opinions. Take them or leave them. Uh, hundreds of species, though, affect parasites. Do you remember that? There's no test when we're looking at like PCR, which is looking at fragments of DNA. There's no test that covers all these hundreds of species as research is continuing to pour out. So I just don't think we're advanced enough yet already. Maybe in five or 10 years, we could be. Um, but not all parasites have been genome sequenced when you're looking at PCR DNA testing. Not every bowel movement will parasites actually come out. There's parasites that are systemic in your body. They're in your brain. They're all, they can be all over your body besides just your GI tract. And every poop doesn't mean that every single worm that you have is going to come out as well. And this is probably one of the craziest things. When parasites die, certain kinds of them can release enzymes or will release enzymes that dissolve their own bodies. So let's say you do a stool sample and it's uh, Wednesday night. You're like, okay, do the stool sample, let it dry, you pack it up, you get shipped out Thursday or Friday. That's going to the lab. They get they get it by, you know, maybe Tuesday. It sits there for a couple days. Next thing you know, it's a week later. And then the, the technician's looking at it. Well, by then, even if there was a parasite there, they could have dissolved itself because of the enzyme really um, you know, it's a, it's, it's a mechanism so they can't become detected as easy. So it's pretty crazy when you were to look into the parasite side. So instead of really spending money toward testing, I'm a big fan of parasite cleansing. Let's see what comes out and let's see how you feel. And it's not the best judge because um, only 30%, unfortunately, of parasites are actually visible to the naked eye. But that moment when I had to pull those two worms out of me in my rear end, I was like, whoa, I don't need a test showing me I'm pot. Like I, I, I see them. I see them there. So if y'all want to know a free parasite test, type yes in the chat. We'll make sure y'all are still awake. And uh, if there's any issues on the tech side, Trevor, just, just let me know here. I'm just rocking and rolling. You know, everything's good. Cool. We getting some interaction too. It's hard for me to see the chat here with the screens, but y'all still awake. So let's do the free parasite test. You're gonna take two fingers, hold them up, and then you're gonna find your carotid artery on the side of your neck. And if you feel a pulse, that's a positive for parasites. Yeah, there's a little sarcasm there, but it is some truth. So that's one of my friends, uh, Dr. Todd Watts, one of his favorite tests is the pulse test. And if you don't find a pulse, you might want to recheck just to make sure you're alive. So there is some sarcasm with that. But honestly, I believe in everybody that I've worked with clinical wise and now really out to the masses, parasites are a modern day epidemic that is being missed and cleansing has changed and transformed so many people. Now, clearly, there's going to be parasites that are way more out of control with certain people and not as much with other people, but parasite cleansing has to be really in the regimen. So secret number two here, remember covering three secrets. Uh, the first one was be persistent and consistent. The second secret here is assume that you have parasites. So assume that you have parasites. This is Chris. Uh, the title of his email, which caught our eye, was you saved my life. I was diagnosed with SIBO last March and have been suffering GI issues for many years, including gallbladder, like you. Did many of the available parasite cleanses. Went to Yale, digestive diseases. The doc there wanted to put me on antibiotics. No, my ND agreed. My naturopath agreed. I accidentally listened to one of your webinars with Mimosa Pudica and following the protocol. I was so miserable. I was so desperate at this point. I would have tried anything, even did the turpentine protocol. Ooh. I'd been making a record since starting the protocol of huge parasites I gotten out for a steady three weeks. If you ever want pictures to show what can come out of you, even uh, if stool t um, even if the stool tests I've had over the years were negative, I'd gladly send them. So he'd run tests and they always came back negative. My gallbladder now feels like it's working. No more discomfort uh, when I eat fat. No more pain under the sternum. No more vomiting in the morning after drinking only water. I think 
these things were causing the bacteria to be off balance, which is why so many people have SIBO and other digestive diseases. I can't thank you enough. You saved my life. I can live and even feel good again. Please keep helping people look for parasites. So that right there, if you ever need inspiration to wake up, it's like get an email like that. You're like, whoa, making a difference. So I want to go through mapping out the protocol and kind of uh, let you know where things fit into the journey because I know you're probably thinking, wow, I got worms. I need to cleanse them. There's more than just taking antiparasitic herbs. So as we look at parasites, parasites, I can't think of a better analogy other than thinking about like a terrorist and you have that mother cell. If you can take down the mother cell, like all the other terrorist cells basically disappear, you want to think of parasites in that way. That if you have mold toxicity, mold spores will live inside of parasites. So if you're trying to clear mold from your body, you have to parasite cleanse so that mold spores can't live inside of the parasites to keep replicating. So parasites are a necessity to deal with before you uh, clear out the mold within your body. Heavy metals. Parasites are sponges for heavy metals. They'll, they'll absorb six, sometimes eight times their body weight in heavy metals. This is one of the reasons there's a massive epidemic right now of parasites is because there's a massive epidemic of toxins. We share one atmosphere, specifically heavy metals. Are, I mean, cadmium, mercury, lead, arsenic, all these different types of heavy metals that are unfortunately in our environment, we pick up and we become toxic. Parasites are actually helping the body to absorb the heavy metal, but the issue is this. The heavy metals are still inside of you because they're inside the parasite, and the parasite is inside of you, and now we're getting the byproduct of the parasite causing its issues, releasing its toxins and its waste products. So if you're going to focus on detoxifying heavy metals, which I did for two years before even understanding that parasites was a big issue, you have to clear parasites first and then the heavy metals that are in the parasites can be released. Then you can fully clear the toxins out of the body. So again, parasites before mold, parasites before heavy metals. And then the last one here is parasites before viruses and bacteria. There's a couple things to this. So Dr. Alan McDonald in research found that Lyme disease, the bacteria Borrelia burgdorferi, can live safely and does within different types of nematode, which are, which are uh, worms, right? They're um, parasites, basically. So different larvae, worms, and eggs, Lyme disease can live safely within those types of worms. So if you've identified, wow, I've got a chronic infection like Lyme disease, you don't just jump on whether you're going uh, the pharmaceutical route or the natural route, something to try to kill Lyme. You got to break, you got to take away the thing that's protecting Lyme, which is uh, parasites. And actually, heavy metals protect Lyme disease as well. So Lyme does, uh, heavy metals form part of the biofilm. So if you're specifically looking at going after a chronic infection like Bartonella or Epstein-Barr virus or Lyme disease, understand detoxifying heavy metals and clearing parasites has to come first before you can get to that. Now, the interesting thing about viruses and parasites, and I hope you guys are, hope you all are getting some great uh, learning tips here tonight, is when you have a parasitic infection, it shifts the immune system to this one side called Th2. And when it shifts over to this one side, now the other side of the immune system is what's designed to go after viruses and keep those at bay and not and stop them from replicating. When there's a par chronic parasitic infection, shifts the immune system over into this Th2 dominant state, which then allows viruses to run rampant and replicate like mad. So if you're going after uh, CMV, Epstein-Barr, these different retrovirus type viruses, have to go after parasites first to allow the immune system balance out to then the immune system can start activating to go after the viruses. And there's certain viruses that actually live inside of parasites as well. So let's put a conclusion. So if you want to take a screenshot, feel free, or you can draw this out. This is kind of the final part of this drawing here. The first thing that we want to focus with is drainage, opening up the drainage pathways. That is making sure you're pooping, supporting your liver bile duct system, uh, the lymphatic system. Then what that's doing is that's supporting the body to get it ready to then clear out parasites. So here's what I see. Whoa, parasites totally want to cleanse. Let's do it. Oh my gosh, I'm seeing stuff. 
boom, I crash, I don't feel good, oh, whoa, what happened? It's basically you just jumped into killing. And the first thing you wanna do is not jump into eliminating parasites or killing parasites, you wanna support the normal drainage pathways. So you wanna make sure you're pooping two to three times a day if you're in the health restoration phase. So if you have health issues and you're looking to improve, make sure you're going two to three times a day, not watery stools, otherwise it's too much. If, you're, if you say, Dr. J, I'm actually pretty healthy, I just wanna live longer and, and, and just focus on wellness, then one to two bowel movements is a good amount for a typical healthy person. When you're looking for health restoration, I'd bump that up just a little bit, poop two to three times a day. If that pathway is clogged, everything else gets clogged in the body, so make sure you're pooping. The next thing you wanna focus with is the liver bile duct. Parasites love the GI, they love the liver bile duct. You wanna make sure to open that up. Anything that gets clogged in that area is gonna cause reactions. So opening that up, I like to do 30 days of supporting drainage. So you, want, you can write that down, 30 days of drainage. Then you can start going after parasites. I recommend a minimum 90 days of parasites, but I've had people that have had to do it over a year, year and a half, that I mean, it's just, it's a massive infection within their body. Uh, and one thing I've, I've noticed like in my own journey and that as I've continued to progress and just my health continues to get better, my, I mean, skin and oh, so many, so many things, which I didn't, I wouldn't even say were like that bothersome, but then when they improved and got better, it was like, whoa, it's just, you know, just as if the clouds parted and sunshine came in, you know, it's just a whole nother level. Um, but I recommend 30 days of drainage, then you're gonna introduce parasites. Now here's the key. It's not open up your drainage pathways and then you stop. Drainage is gonna come along with you for the journey and that's what's gonna prevent having a lot of crashes and a lot of symptoms that's going on. So secret number three right here, stay focused, hang with me. We got some more, more stuff to go through here on the phases uh, and then we'll get to Q&A. Secret number three is know the steps necessary to do before for parasite cleansing, during and after. So what do we do before we open up drainage? What do we do during? Well, you need some kind of binders. The bioactive carbons are the you know binders 2.0 of the world that they not only bind toxins, but they also repair. So they're more advanced than activated carbon charcoal or clay or something. So bioactive carbons. But the, the reason you need a binder is when you kill parasites, the heavy metals, you hope that most of, the, most of them leave with the debris of the parasites when they leave the body, but in all reality, there's gonna be some heavy metals that get released, and you don't wanna recirculate them and absorb them somewhere else in the body, you wanna bind onto them and pull them out, and that's gonna be the safest thing. And then afterward, it's really moving into uh, heavy metal detoxification, and then into that clearing up the, the chronic smaller type infections. So. Here's the wheel, if you wanna take a screenshot of this. This is also a handout that uh, Lindsay, uh, Lindsay and, and Trevor uh, sent out, I believe. You'll see this in the handout. Uh, this is essentially the wheel, uh, the wheel of health, we can call that. So the first step, that zero one there is prepare. That's opening up the drainage pathways. Step two is remove, that's really going after the parasites and pathogens. Three is we're building up the body. Uh, to really start supporting it to get into deeper detox. And then step four, that green one, is that's really where we're getting deep on heavy metals and pesticides, radiation, pulling pulling that stuff out. So phase one, what I recommend is we're gonna open up the drainage pathways. We're gonna start establishing some energy within the body too, cellular energy. And this is gonna help to reduce reactions. Now there's some people out there that's like, well, I have to feel stuff so I know it's working, great. Dose high, just jump into the parasite cleansing so you know it works, and then you can back backtrack and retreat back to drainage, and then life will be a lot lot easier and calmer. Some people need that, honestly. It's probably more of a guy thing, uh, but it is what it is. But what I recommend is always support drainage, always open up those pathways. It's gonna be so much gentler, and then you're gonna prepare your body. So there's four products I recommend in the phase one drainage side of things. The phase one, we're looking at the kidney liver detox, that's that orange bottle, and intestinal mover. So that's supporting the bowel movement and that's supporting the liver, bile duct, and kidneys. The dropper there, that's liquid bioactive carbon minerals. It, actually through testing, we found that it's really good for clearing glyphosate, really good for helping clear out heavy metals, 
really good for clearing out mycotoxins, which are the mold, uh, what, what the toxin that mold produces. But primarily the reason it's introduced here is it's really supportive to the body. Actually having over 70 different types of minerals in a plant-based form that are energized, that can actually help just communication within the cell. So there's a lot of benefits to those minerals, but really it's just kind of establishing a baseline to get the body prepped, getting ready to go. And then that last thing there in the green bottle says bioactive carbon biotox. So bioactive carbons are specifically uh, created from extracts of fulvic acid and humic acid by some of the top leading scientists in the world. And what these are, they're programmed for different things. So the biotox is specifically for mold, ammonia, which is a really high alkaline toxin, uh, fungal and candida byproducts, and also helping to upregulate cellular oxygenation in, in the cell. It's a really good just general overall for the gut. So it really helps kind of establish um, better gut health, intestinal mover helps motility, the kidney liver detox helps the drainage uh, of opening up the liver, bile duct, and kidney area, and minerals just helps kind of that baseline. So that's phase one. Now you might not feel anything for that phase one. You might be pooping some more, which is good if you're constipated, um, but and you might feel a little bit of energy, maybe your sleep gets a little um, kind of weird and all of a sudden you get better sleep, like those are typical things. But I mean, a lot of people might not necessarily notice anything because you're supporting the normal drainage pathways. But trust me, I love doing that because that helps to really get you ready for phase two. Phase two, that's where you get into the gut scrubbing. That's where you get into the parasite cleansing. You know, you're really supporting uh, clearing out these endotoxins that are within the GI tract. So now it looks like a lot more stuff, but we're staying on the biotox, um, staying on the kidney liver detox and the minerals. And now there's four different products that we're adding to phase two, if you will. Uh, so the two products in the middle there, Formula One, that is an anti-parasitic formula. It's got a bunch of different Ayurvedic herbs in it, clove, neem, vedanga, holarina, uh, trifala, our bioactive carbon mix as well to protect it. This was actually formulated, um, the original formulation came from the Secretary of Health in India. We actually just interviewed him this last week. Uh, half my team's over in India. They're coming back actually tomorrow. So super excited to get Dr. Todd Watts back in, in the States here from his India trip. Uh, but then we uh, kind of enhanced it with the bioactive carbons and made a few tweaks there. So the Formula One uh, is definitely an amazing formula, really good systemic herbal formula for parasites. You see the Mimosa Pudica seed. That's the one that gets all its recognition because, oh my gosh, you know, it's amazing for parasites and stuff. But think of mimosa pudica seed as it's a gut scrubber. It's a gut grabber. It's just a real good gut support. And it's not rough on the GI. So it's not like a psyllium husk or something that could scratch your intestinal lining. It is, it's very sticky, gelatinous, but it has some herbal components to it that make it, uh, that have anti-parasitic properties throughout the body too. So it's not just the GI. So if you're looking at, okay, Dr. J, I love the idea of parasite cleansing and you know what? I'd love to do like the whole protocol, but I just want to go after parasites. Great. The two formulas I'd recommend is Mimosa Pudica seed and Formula One. But when you incorporate the other things, you're going to get better results. You're going to feel better. So um, the, the green bottle there to the right, uh, second one from the right to left here uh, is bioactive carbon foundation. Now that one uh, binds on heavy metals. So when you kill parasites and you get the heavy metal release, the foundation is going to bind on to that. It also has some viral retroviral uh, support. So any viruses that get stirred up or retroviruses, that's going to help support that as well too. And then the lymphatic detox. Lymphatic detox is really supporting the lymphatic system to open up and move. That's where a lot of pathogens are. Uh, that can live in your lymphatic system. That's actually where a lot of the immune system is as well. So it's just getting a little bit deeper. So that is essentially um, the first two phases of the cleanse. So um, I'd love to help answer any questions. And if you've got, uh, Trevor, if you want to post a link in there or coupon code uh, mm -hmm. as well, I'm sure your audience would, would love that. Uh, let's just look at the chat here. Are there any pharmaceuticals you'd recommend as well? I personally don't. Uh, however, some popular ones would be ivermectin, uh, praziquanil, uh, alinea, uh, pyranthal palmoate. I think that's a decent over-the-counter that can help with uh, pinworms as well. 
I just, but I just, I don't think there's necessarily a need for it. Now, five years ago, if you would ask me, hey, drugs, I would have been like, oh my gosh, the, the devil, stay away from me. I feel like I'm getting a little bit more emotionally intelligent where, you know, there's a time and place. And if you, you know, maybe there's a really severe parasitic infection, you need some help with antiparasitic medications, they're there, you know, just got to find somebody to help you. Jay, let me fire a couple of these at you because I've got uh, ones that were come in by email as well. Um, what are the most common symptoms of parasites in the body? Is there something that is, is or is it just so widespread? There's not no such thing. There's a lot of symptoms. Um, I can pull up. Um, well, let me just rattle. Let me rattle some off, and if you want to know more, I can pull up some sheets too with with some info. But essentially, any GI disturbance, so constipation, diarrhea, or the going back and forth. Typically, parasites are always going to be related to GI stuff. A lot of mood things. So there's a book called Your Brain on Parasites, and it's a black cover on Amazon, and they really go into the research about how parasites actually change your uh, thoughts and moods and personalities and things like that. So somebody that's dealing with like anxiety, depression, OCD, bipolar, I mean, that could be literally parasites that are then you know creating that. Sugar cravings, especially having to eat often, uh, it's important to know like that's not your body that actually is wanting the food, it's the critters inside. So that's a great time to throw some antiparasitics down the hatch to surprise them and then you know wait 20 minutes, then you can eat because you're more likely to get those nutrients. Because when you break down, Trevor, when you break down the word of parasite, the Greek meaning is one that sits at another's table. So they're basically stealing nutrients, they're stealing things from you and uh, we can't let them run the show. Uh, uh, grinding teeth, uh, drooling at night. Uh, so when you when you sleep, parasites get active at night. So typically waking up and can't fall back asleep, uh, waking up in the middle of the night, those are types uh, uh, having a hard time actually falling asleep, jacking the cortisol up at night. Parasites do that. Uh, but then you'll grind and clench and drool uh, as well. Restless leg syndrome, skin issues, um, purple bags under the eyes. Uh, food allergies, food sensitivities, any food allergy, food sensitivity, I'm thinking parasitics, you know, parasites for sure. Um, okay. Especially dairy allergy. So there's a, there's a ton of symptoms. Sinuses, we're actually finding uh, in our latest research here, strongyloides. So that's a parasite that loves the liver bile duct. It loves muscle belly. So if you work out and really sore and achy afterward, it, Sometimes it can be parasites actually living in the muscle belly. They're getting irritated, causing those symptoms. But we're actually finding that that's sinus issues. So instead of the whole Marcon's multi-resistant staph aureus um, type stuff, actually finding uh, parasites up in the sinuses cause a lot of biofilm and, and snot production too. Jay, this, this, this blows my mind, I have to tell you, because I, 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 mean, I knew nothing about this. And I just... I, I can't take it in. I mean, some of those photographs, I had to, I actually had to turn the screen off because I'm, I'm, I'm really squeamish. But uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, for someone coming into this who knows zero about it, it's really hard to take it in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is overwhelming, honestly. And I, I, I totally get like the kind of fire hydrant hose overflow. I, I mm -hmm. honestly, yeah, I just want to share, uh, share some. Share as much as I can in a short period to uh, help help you all uh, on your path of healing, uh, health and healing. So, Incredible. Folks, listen, just so you do know, uh, there's 10% off any of those products that you saw. The link is at the top of the chat. And there's 20% off the full package of everything, okay? That, that is uh, the button at the side. So there's 20% off if you get the whole package and 10% if you want to pick and choose an individual supplement. Um, let me... Couple more questions. Is the parasite cleanse safe for people with blood pressure? Someone is asking, Jay. Yes. Yep. No problem at all. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. The big the big thing to always think about is, and this is not just our microbe formula stuff. Any medication and supplement keep two hours away from each other. Uh, so if you're on any type of medication, you know the supplements. Um, you know they're very. I don't know if there's really any meds that are contraindicated as long as you keep them two hours away. So just don't take in, in the bioactive carbons, just real quick, they're kind of like charcoal, but they're more advanced. Um, we say don't take them with meds. It's not because they'll actually bind the meds. That's why you can take them with food. They'll actually cause enhanced absorption of the meds and medications are, are dose based on how normal absorption. So you could 
potentially overdose because these are actually, you know, the bioactive carbons are actually upping the absorption. So you can take supplements with bioactive carbons. That's awesome, right? You increase absorption. You just don't want to mix meds and, and supplements together ever. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Um, Carol is asking, can Mimosa pudica eliminate parasites in the brain? Um, so there is, because there's hundreds of species of parasites, I don't believe any one product will clear everything out. Mimosa pudica is amazing. Um, when I was on it, I actually had a lot of, I had like hardening of the end of my nose and swelling. Uh, I got like, if you, if you get, um, lots of boogers or like even scabs inside the nostrils, that's a parasite sign as well too. I, so there is a, there is, like I said, a chemical constituent that does have a whole systemic effect. However, formula one is going to have a stronger effect. And then we're, we have another formula coming out, which is specifically for strongyloides, liver flukes, blastocystis hominis. It's called formula two. That's going to be out. We're looking at, I think, a few weeks right now, um, and that's a liquid tincture. So I think it's always good to, you know, not just rely on one thing, but to kind of rotate. But they all have systemic effects. Probably that Formula 2 is going to be the most for brain, and Formula 1 would probably be second on the list. Okay, fantastic. Um, Jay, yes, there will be a replay video that you're asking there. You will be emailed a link to the replay. Um, someone is at, Carol is asking, do parasites leave behind bacteria that will uh, – need remediation after the 30 day protocol. Yeah. So the, so when you do like the complete, when you do the starter detox protocol, when you, you know, click the link that that's there. And if you're watching the replay, I'm sure they can post it below. Um, but if you decide, Hey, I'm just going to dive into the whole starter detox protocol. I think you'll get the best results, but that's like four months. You know, that's not a overnight thing. So 30 days is opening up drainage. Then we get into parasites uh, and then, you know, moving forward from there. So this isn't, uh, you know, a quick, a quick fix type thing by any means. Sure. Um, I, you'll get results formula one and mimosa pudica seed, but I'm always looking at, I want to minimize as many symptoms <laughs> as possible. And when you kill parasites, yeah, you're going to release bacteria, viruses within. I, when I uh, was cleansing, I actually got an outbreak of chicken pox shingles from my pubic bone up into my armpits. And then like oh in, God. Uh, symmetrical. I actually had an outbreak of that. And what I realized was, wow, I was the chicken pox I was exposed to when I was a kid, finally coming out where our immune system could then clear it out. And I think that's where people get re-exposures of these things constantly. They can't clear them out because they're harboring, they're, they're living inside of a parasite. And if we clear the, we clear that protective mechanism away, it unlocks and allows our body to, you know, really actually get deep down into these things we need to clear out. Incredible. Um, Jason is asking, is this safe for 12 year olds, Jay? Is this safe for children? Yes. So for kid dosing, uh, so you can write this down. Uh, let's, let's look at a 10 year old, for instance, and let's say they're a hundred pounds. So when, when I'm talking about a, a child, think about the weight of a child more than the age, but if they're typical weight, typical age, then, it, then you're fine. But a 10 year old, that's a hundred pounds roughly you're going to dose half dosing of an adult. So for instance, mimosa pudica seed is two capsules twice a day. If you are a 10 or a 12 year old, let's say a hundred pounds, then you're going to work that child up to one capsule twice a day. Cause that's going to be half the dosing. If it's a, let's say a five year old, five or six year old, and they're 50 pounds, then you're going to work them up to a quarter dosing of an adult. And then if the child can't swallow capsules, uh, then you just want to mix stuff with it or, you know, mimosa pudica seed is actually really thick and gelatinous. So you uh, want to mix it typically with kids maple syrup. Uh, otherwise, if you're an adult, uh, olive oil or avocado oil. You don't want to mix it with water because it gets too gelatinous and it's really hard to swallow. Okay. Barb is asking, are these supplements okay if you have chronic kidney disease? Yes. Um, in those cases, I just wouldn't try to push it really fast and hard because you don't want to over the kidneys. So essentially when you look at and and I can always come back on and, and help out kind of with the drainage concept a little bit more if, if you need Trevor. But when you look at drainage, basically 
the liver processes toxins phase one and two and then dumps it into the bile, which they call phase three. If the bile's not moving, then it backs up and dumps it into the bloodstream. When it dumps it in the bloodstream, where we don't want it, then it goes to the skin, so you get skin issues, it goes to the kidneys, and then you get kidney problems, and it goes to the brain, and you get the brain fog, memory issues, and you know, thoughts and all that stuff kind of change up. So anybody with kidney disease, I'm always looking at the liver bile duct, making sure that's opened up, and then supporting the kidneys. So the kidney liver detox would be great. Uh, as far as when you start getting into the quote unquote killing immune support uh, and detoxifying chemicals out, uh, you should be fine. Just go slow and low. Uh, you know, there's no need to, to sprint and try to overwhelm the body. Okay, excellent. Um, Donna is asking, at what age, what's the youngest you would recommend that you start a child if you reckon they have parasites? What's the youngest you could do this? Uh, it's a great question. I mean, really, um, a baby that's born, you can feed it to mom and mom is breastfeeding that then the baby gets it that way. So um, you just, you want to be slow and low though. Uh, I don't recommend parasite cleansing or detoxing while pregnant. I, I usually don't recommend that when you are breastfeeding either, but the older the child gets, um, and it depends on if the mom's ever done this before, but that's always a possibility. But then as you get, get a little bit higher, it just kind of depends on when the kid can swallow capsules. As soon as the kid can swallow capsules, it makes it way easier. Until then, you're basically mixing powders, you're using tinctures and things. So, I mean, it can be done actually pretty early. It's just gonna be a lot more limited. Uh, you're not gonna you know, be doing a lot of stuff necessarily the younger they are. Okay, Patty is saying she has hemochromatosis. Is there a connection with parasites possibly? And is it okay to take the supplements with that? Yeah, I don't know of any uh, contraindication, you know, for for the supplements. Um, as far as what the link is, uh, I don't know if it's a direct link of parasites. I mean, when I look at, when I look at, because I get this question a lot, Dr. J, I've been diagnosed with fill the blank in, what do I do? I'm always looking at what's the source or sources of your health issues. And I see parasites being a massive one, toxins. Um, other chronic infections such as bacteria and viruses. And then I would say the fourth one is mold, which is environmental, uh, whether house, work, school, and then that ends up having mold in your body that then produces mycotoxins. So I think it's good to, if, you're, if, if you get a little tunnel vision on this is what I've been diagnosed with, it's kind of good to break that out and just think, well, what's the source or what's the sources? So I, I don't have a clear, that's going to be the cause as much as I, okay. The protocol would absolutely help. Okay. You, you mentioned dairy allergy, Jay. Could you say a little bit more about that? Yes. So parasites love uh, the milk protein specifically. So when you are eating food, and let's say you have a protein, your body wants to break protein down into amino acids. The amino acids then are used to then manufacture uh, neurotransmitters, Neurotransmitters are the serotonin, dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, right? The happy hormones, these things that keep our psychological state good. So when there's those issues going on, you can look at the fact, because uh, there's a lot of practi some practitioners that will dose amino acids, but I'm thinking, well, what's causing that issue in the first place? And it comes back to parasites. So parasites love proteins and they'll consume the proteins. Then when they consume the proteins, our body can't get the amino acids because the parasite took it. So that's where if you supplement amino acids, you kind of bypass that to get it, uh, you know, so the parasites can't get it. But the, I mean, the, the thing is you want to really uh, kill the parasites so they can't steal the protein from you. But they have a huge attraction for milk protein. So when you have a milk allergy or dairy sensitivity, it's almost always parasites. Uh, Dr. Todd Watts, my good friend, he had a severe dairy allergy, like massive and then as he cleared parasites out, it disappeared. So, wow. uh, Mark is asking the marketed starter protocol, is that for 60 days or 120 days? How, how long does that last for? Uh, 120 days, yep. Okay, excellent, so four months, Mark. Uh, Delia is asking if these pills could be used in dogs to remove worms, is this a natural way of doing that? Um, so with dogs, you're not going to use the whole protocol by any means. But most of Pudica seed, you can give to dogs. If the dog would just swallow a capsule, it makes it really easy. If the dog's going to chew the capsule, 
you know, a lot of dogs will just, you know, swallow and not chew at all. That's easy. But if the dog's going to chew it, uh, cause, uh, my dog's little and she likes to chew, but then she like, can't like, it gets weird, you know, she'll spit it out half the time. So yeah, dogs can have mimosa pudica seed. Um, but I wouldn't say that this is specifically made for animals. Sure. Uh, Ted is asking any side effects with the herbs. Die off. I, I, I mean, that's always a, anytime you're going after parasites, there's, it's typical to get some times where all of a sudden you have a couple loose stools or your stomach feels a little sensitive. Maybe you get sensitive to some foods that you weren't sensitive before, you know, as you're clearing them out. Uh, sometimes you might get brain fog. I mean, there's a lot of symptoms that could pop up, but the more you support the drainage pathways, the less and, and bind onto these toxins that get released, the less likely you are to have any symptoms. Okay. Uh, Nora is saying she has a mild allergy to cloves. So could she still take the formula one? Okay. Um, that's interesting. Cause is, is the allergy, is the body actually have an allergy to clove or is the parasites reacting when you take clove and then that feels like an allergy? And I, I, I don't know, I don't know that answer. Right. But it's, it's a, it's an interesting question. If you are extremely sensitive to clove and like can't handle it, I would not recommend Formula One because there's clove in it. Now, that being said, again, is it the parasites that are reacting? Uh, and then, because this is what happens with the dairy allergy. So parasites eat the milk protein and then they produce a toxin that then the body reacts to, but the brain's like, wait a minute, it's the dairy you ate. That's what gave me the reaction, but it's actually the parasite toxin released from the parasite eating, you know, eating, eating that milk protein. So it gets a little like, um, you know, questionable, if you will, of what the actual source of an allergy is. Susan is asking, does this interfere at all with CBD oil, cannabis oil? Uh, nope. No issues there, Susan. Nope. Um, another one here. We're, we're near the end, folks. We've been running for an hour and a quarter, so I don't want to keep Jay too long, and it's already 12.15 here in the UK. So, um, some yeah, of you're a rock star, Trevor. <laughs> no, uh, we used to. Jo Georgiane is saying she's trying to heal advanced basal cell carcinoma naturally, but is having a very difficult time. Is there any way a parasite cleanse might help her body to heal? My expertise is not in cancer. Okay. However, from interviewing people that do have expertise in that area, parasite cleansing and detoxification are way up on the list for um, you know, the importance of, of helping the body. So I don't see any reason why you shouldn't or can't. Um, but as far as that, that's really not my, my area of expertise. Okay. Uh, Lorraine is asking what all is in protocol one? Protocol one. So if you're on, if you click on, if you click on the link, um, that is posted there. It is microbeformulas.com forward slash. Is it LL10? Uh, that's I think live long. And the top one, the live longer is the whole package. Okay. Okay. So if, uh, when you're on that website, on the microbe formulas website, there is a detox protocol button and that'll show you all the products in there. As far as phase one, that is the intestinal mover, a bottle of the intestinal mover that helps peristalsis the bowels. That was actually, um, that was a product uh, that was developed by a pharmaceutical company. Our scientists used to work for a pharmaceutical company and they spent over 10 years and a million dollars on that product. And because it actually helped people get off of meds, they, they never came out with it. Uh, the NDA, the non-disclosure actually expired and so now we have it. So that's the intestinal mover. Uh, the kidney liver detox is the second product. Uh, bioactive carbon biotox, so that's the binder and then the liquid bioactive carbon minerals. So there's four products in phase one. Okay, Marianne is asking if brain fog could be a sign of parasites. Yes, brain fog uh, is also a sign though of the brain drainage clogged. So if you think about drainage funnel, uh, there's a priority, pooping is number one. So if you're not pooping, Everything above the funnel gets clogged up. That can't drain, right? The next thing up is liver bile duct. The next thing above that is the lymphatic system. The next thing above that 
the top here is organs and, and tissues. That would be the brain. So in order for the brain to drain, uh, the lymphatic system has to be moving. In order for the lymphatic system to be moving, the liver bile duct has to be moving. In order for the liver bile duct to be moving, the colon has to be moving. So there's uh, uh, anytime there's brain fog, absolutely infection and toxins are going to come up. Parasites is going to be one of those infection things. But you got to make sure the brain is draining. So I would say brain drainage, infection, and toxins for that. Okay, a couple more quick ones, Jay. Um, someone is asking if saunas can kill parasites. When, you, when you're in a sauna, especially like an infrared sauna, the initial sweat within the first five minutes is actually when most toxins leave the body. The longer you're in a sauna, then that's actually warming your core temperature up, and that has the effect against pathogens. I haven't seen results necessarily on the parasite side. For bacteria and viruses, absolutely. Parasites, potentially, but I wouldn't say that's top of the list for, for a sauna. Okay. Uh, are the products vegetarian? Elisa is asking. Yes. Yeah, all capsules are plant-based. It's a veggie capsule, um, and there's, yeah, there's no animal products at all in them. Okay, fantastic. And I'm going to end with this one and it's just disappeared off my screen actually yeah fred is asking should in your opinion honestly should everyone be doing a parasite cleanse or just those people who are reasonably sick oh no everybody everybody so i mean when you look back and this is a fantastic question i so appreciate y'all being on tonight uh or today wherever you're coming from but uh, when you look back at history i mean farmers would cleanse the animals every spring and fall and at the same time they would cleanse the family the family members well, somewhere that got lost in tra you know, tradition, and now it's not even on the list of like parasites. I'm in a first world country, not an issue. So, and the reason that there's an epidemic, and this is the connection, the reason there's an epidemic of parasites right now is because there's a toxicity epidemic. I mean, the EPA of the United States has recognized over 85,000 different man-made chemicals. That's just the United States. Like what else is out there that, you know, isn't on that list? So, there's so many chemicals now that it's creating an environment to then attract parasites. So I'm a huge fan of doing an initial, like more intense, longer term parasite cleanse. So minimum 90 days, but honestly, I think most people with health issues can benefit from six months of parasite cleansing. Then look at that, then just look at maintenance. So if you wanted to just take five days over a full moon, you know, once a month or once every other month and just do some cleansing because parasites get more active, uh, during full moons, you know how the tides change, the water tides change. Well, parasites are majority water, so they, their activity increases, which is why a lot of symptoms pop up around the full moon. Um, but you could also just do it like twice a year where you take 30 days to do a cleanse and then wait six months and then do another 30 days, right? So there's not necessarily the perfect way, but I always think of do an initial cleanse, bring the levels of parasites down, as you bring them down, just through your normal exposures, you'll probably get exposed, you get some you know, more parasites, and then as you periodically cleanse, just you'll bring them back down and prevent them from ever getting built back up. Health issues come from when the parasites get out of control. So if we can minimize them getting out of control, everything changes. Fantastic. Jay, listen, thank you so much for, for giving us your time. You're, you're obviously, I mean, your knowledge is unbelievable. So I really appreciate you, you giving us this, this hour and a half that you've done. Well, I, yeah, I appreciate you having me on Trevor and I'm just so appreciative of all your work and uh, everybody listening tonight. So any way I can serve you, just, uh, just let me know. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. I really do appreciate it. Folks, I hope you found that interesting. Um, it's, it, it actually blows my mind um, what, what we've saw and heard tonight. So if you want to take advantage of those offers, fantastic. Whether you do or not, it's not a problem. Um, but there's so much there to think about, and I myself actually am going to do this because, uh, interestingly, I, I've got an issue in my head here, if you see, and um, I stopped taking dairy about two weeks ago, and I thought, okay, I'll give it 10 days, no dairy, and it didn't really make much of a difference. So I went back on dairy yesterday, and my head exploded today. So, And, and I, I should have known better, I guess, but it, t it takes, like, I think a couple of months for it to to slow down. But from what Jay's saying, I dread to think now what could be actually in there. So it's it's all very interesting and it's something I'm going to do myself. So listen, thank you again for joining us. Really hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found it interesting. I'll speak to you all soon. Have a good night. Take care.